Hi all. In today's video, we're going to be starting a project together. I'm going to show you how to set up a frame with some fabric. So our project today is one of the body threads fairy tales. Shannis in Wonderland. These are great kits. And I forgot it because they're hand dried fabrics and just one colour of thread. So they're really great for beginners. They're nice and simple and they're not too big a project for you to get started. We're going to start with the frame itself. You can see it's a very simple frame. It's not a slatted one and it's obviously not a hoop. As you can see I am missing a bolt on this one which I've been meaning to get replaced for a while. Now what we're going to do is find out the centre of these pieces. This one's already marked up, I don't know if you can quite see it there. But what we do is just measure out the length. And we'll then just half that length, which will be about here and far enough just where just where this little piece of fabric is actually a little bit of thread is. That's quite handy. It's just about there. So that is our frame ready to rock. Okay, so next up we're working on fabric. Let's get this open. I said these are great kits. This is the first one that I've done of the fairy tale kits. So have a quick look at it. So we've got the image, introduction to the kit, and a little bit on these stitches. And we have the pattern, which we'll look at in a moment when we get started. That little flyer. Let's see. Fantastic. And we have the fabric set, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is quite well folded up, so we're pretty much ready to rock with this piece. As it's already folded, we can easily unfold it. And we've got pretty much the centre already there for us. Now if you've got quite a large piece, or if you've cut a piece to size, and you need to know that that's all you need to do is basically fold the, the fabric in half and half again. And that will be your centre of the fabric. So let me just grab that needle. We are just going to it in here just to mark up where our centre will be. Okay, so to a quick change of plan, the um, once we have the fabric out, realised the frame we had was actually a little bit too small for the fabric itself. So what I've done, I have zoom out a little bit. I've gone for a bigger frame. This is actually my grandma's one. As you see, there's extra bits on the side, but we'll talk about that another time. So we have the fabric ready to go. And this is the thread I'm planning to use to attach it to the frame. Normally, I will work from centre outwards. Okay. So This line is basically where the fabric has been folded so this is pretty much the centre line itself so what I do we just take the needle I tend to come straight up at the centre put that through and then just bring it through the centre of this fabric
And it normally tends to do a little bit higher up like that. Then we just keep going back and forth. a very thick tapestry needle rather than an embroidery needle for this and after a while it just slowly does attach now the reason you want to work on a frame rather than just holding the fabric is it tends to keep fabric taut and you do get a good amount of tension. Now the best frames to use are normally slatted frames. You can actually purchase them from the Royal School of Needlework. They do have them on their website. I have found a few other places but they're not that easy to get hold of I find. I'm just doing this very very roughly and as quick as I can. One thing you want to remember when doing this is you want to make sure the fabric is attached the same way the piece on your frame is going. I've seen a few pieces where people have attached it the other way around and for me it looks very awkward. I'll show you a photo. I actually do have a piece to hand which whoever originally put it on the frame did do it upside down. I'll do a little video on the different frames as um, you guys may have noticed in the past in videos I've got a couple different, a couple vintage ones as well including two that stand up Okay, so we've got this piece already done, and we're going to flip it to this end. And what you can do, I find it's best to roll up the fabric until you've got the length that's going to meet the other end. leave that hanging. We'll thread up the needle again and we'll get that bit, second part done. Okay so we threaded up our needle, we've attached the fabric this side 
and round that up. So now I'm ready to do this bit. And we're just going to match up the folded centre line of the fabric to the centre line mark on the frame. Just take our needle up, you can even just take the needle up through the centre line here to start with. Um put it up through the centre line in the fabric where you want to start. Just pull that tight. And then just work outwards. And it's probably a lot easier when you're not trying to juggle this around a tripod. So you guys will probably find it a lot easier than how I'm finding it right now. It doesn't matter what colour thread you use, I tend to just use whatever I have most of. It doesn't matter overly of the thread I find. Uh, you do want a good thick thread though, so don't split the thread if you, as if you were to do an embroidery piece, just use the six strands or four sometimes if you want to be a bit saving on your thread hopefully you don't get any knots so you to work your way down till you've got to the end So we've tightened at both ends and now we have the middle, as you can see I've still got that needle in place. Now you could work like this, especially as you'll be moving the piece up and down. But what I'm going to show you today is how to tighten it so you've got the fabric stretched lengthways as well. So what you want to need is a very, very long piece of thread. Um, Probably go about a yard, maybe. Okay, so you want to keep hold of the end of the thread. So you've got a nice little tail. And wrap it round a couple of times to keep that secure. Now you want it wrapped around a couple of times because while you work, this would will become loose. So you can just unloop it and tighten the fabric that way. So what we do, we just slowly start to take this to the fabric. I hope you don't notice. This is the downside of working with a very large amount of thread is you might very much get a few knots. What you do, you wrap it around the frame tightly. I tend to keep keep it in place with thumb. Just take it back through. 
Now ideally, you'd want to take a bit say, of calico fabric and sew that directly onto here so you've got something to work on. But so in a little bit of a rush, we're just going to go rip the fabric itself. Which personally I can't say I've had any issues with. But it's a proper, proper way. Now this is the reason why you want a good amount of thread. Because you will be taking it round quite a few times. Okay, let's do this side. Again, you want to leave yourself a nice tail. And... Wrap that around a couple of times. And then start taking that through the fabric. Once you start doing this, you can kind of see the fabric itself become a lot tall. And it gets stretched out. That's one thing you want to be careful of is putting it a bit too tight because you can distort the holes in the fabric here when you come through which is why you do tend to want to have a bit of fabric sewed on for the piece you're working on but as I said due to time restraints didn't have time to get some fabric for this to the end there, just pop that out. And as we've got this on here, I'm going to cut this off. To finish it off, I just want to wrap the thread again. And there. Have our frame set up and ready to work. Now again, you can still kind of see just about the lines where the fabric crosses. And we have our centre just here, ready to get stitching. Okay. So I've split up the pattern into these pages. I'm not going to go into much detail in doing the stitches or marking these off because I want to keep a copy of these. It's a good habit to take photocopies and work from the photocopies if you ever plan to want to do the piece again, say on a different piece of fabric. Okay. So as you can see, this is the first page, and they've got the center line mark in here, and it actually comes across between here and where the bottom page will be. So we'll start with this part here, which I believe is Alice's hand. So we'll start with these couple stitches here. And as you can see, we still kind of have the cross where the fabric was folded. So we've got our centre already marked out. Now let's get some thread. We'll fill up this needle and we'll do a couple stitches. Now with any project, before you start on anything, it's best to go through the instructions. Now these kits are fantastic for beginners because there's not much to them. They're very simple. 
Um, they're basically all done in cross stitch. You have, I think, zero back stitch. Um, in the newer ones, there are metallic threads, so they're still fairly good for thickens, but you want a little bit of practice, I'd suggest, before going into metallics. So, basically, it will tell you what stitch to do, and as you can see, we just have cross stitch, and it tells you how many strands to use for the stitch. Okay, so this will be our starting stitch, and uh, I've just brought the needle up where the fabrics, so the fabric crosses where it's been folded. So we're just gonna start with doing our first cross stitch. Unfortunately, where this calls for three threads, I can't anchor it like as you see in our um, other video of beginner stitches due to the fact that with three threads you can't fold one thread over and use it as two so we have to knot three threads and then just continue as you would with your normal cross stitch and that is our first stitch on the project. Now, so I'm not going to do much of this due to the fact that I don't want to mark this pat uh, pattern because I do want to take a photocopy of it when I go back into work. So we're just going to do a couple stitches and we're going to leave it at that. If you guys want to see it in progress, follow me on Facebook as that gets updated regularly with photos of the working process. It doesn't want to be careful of when you're knotting is you don't want the ends of the knots to pull through like that. So there we go, that is how you lace up a frame. For a project rather than working directly with just the fabric or on a hoop. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and have learned something today. Give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions leave them in the comment box below. Happy stitching!